asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. You know you're old when you say things like video games. Mention that to a child now. Do you like video games? Child will look at you like you've grown a second head. It's time to welcome uh, my next guest to the show. She uh, should be no stranger uh, to you whatsoever. Remarkable lady, great broadcaster. You can check out Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, which I believe is 10 a.m. Eastern Time uh, daily. But she's also been practicing natural and homeopathic medicine for many, many years. Drug-free medicine, a certifiable expert. You can find out all you need to know about her at the website healthfreedomrights.com. Again, that's healthfreedomrights.com. Always a pleasure to welcome back Dr. Robin Falkoff. Robin, welcome back. Ah, oh, Richie, what a pleasure. I just have so much respect for you. You're one of the best interviewers out there, and we always have a good time. I mean, what a combination. Thank we, you. We always have a good time. Thanks very much. You obviously got that 20 bucks that I slipped you just before we came on. What a lovely thing to say. Thanks very much for, well, for saying that. Well, you remember, you remember video games. I remember video games. They're not called video games anymore. I was speaking about addiction to gaming and addiction to the internet, especially amongst young children, with a very um, interesting academic from Swansea University in the first hour, Robin. Um, this is massively serious and it plays into a number of agendas, the transhumanist agenda. Our brains are being rewired, Robin, right? Most definitely, because it's entrainment with any type of flashing lights and signals and noises that are repetitive, and people don't realize it, that they're, you know, being uh, put into a different state of mind. I don't know what kind of altered state to call it, but I know I played myself years ago, set myself a limit when I beat Mario Brothers and Zelda, and that was it. <laughs> but I would find when I would go out after playing for hours, because it is addictive, because you think, I'm going to get it the next time, you yeah. know? And I'd be looking at other cars. Oh, I can make that point. I can. Yeah. And I yeah. was having a double dialogue in my head, knowing that that's not going to happen. But it was a crossover from the programming with what you do in the in the game that I could see perhaps somebody... Um, that might have different impulse control problems, they could act out. That's very interesting because when we went to arcades, we quickly ran out of quarters, didn't we? And then we had no choice but to stop. Or in, in, in my case, it would have been 10 pence pieces in, uh, in Ireland. But of course, when the consoles came out, you didn't have to worry about having a quarter, did you, Robin? You could just reset and play again and be there all day. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember playing in arcades. But I know when they came out and friends and friends with kids and it just, you know, it was just quite uh, compelling. And I wonder about the difference now when everything is so much more sophisticated with what they do with sound and light and the, the frequency of the light flashing. I mean, there's so much that we're just oblivious to and that happens subliminally. Brilliant stuff. Hey, can I ask you a very quick question? I want to start, I want to talk about the, 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 the massive story, of course, of the day, the migration uh, issues in the US. And, and, and look, I, I love Robin. I've known Robin for years. We disagree um, when it comes to um, Donald Trump and what he is and what he isn't. But that's fine. That's under, that's, listen, I won't be arguing with you because my listeners get my opinions thrown at them every day. So I'm not going to be arguing. You can say what you want, of course. You know that. Before that, though, was out um, walking uh, our dog with my neighbour, Michael, the other day. Uh, Michael's a great guy, Michael, really interesting fella. And he, he's lived in the... We live in the city of Manchester. We're very close to the city centre, only a couple of miles. It's very busy. He said he's noticed something that has developed over the last 10 or so years. Wait for it, Robin. He said he's noticed that now we are living in never-ending noise. Now, you mentioned noise a minute ago. And I said, what do you mean, Michael? And he said, well... It's constant noise. It never used to be like this. And it's not traffic. It's the noise of somebody sawing wood. It's the noise of somebody using a, um, say it for me, a, a leaf blower. It's the noise of never-ending construction going on in houses around us. And it's the incessant noise from sirens of police cars and ambulances. And I noticed he was right, Robin. 
It is non-stop noise and it's begun to bug me. Surely it can't be good for us. It must be doing something to us. It is not good for us and it drives me crazy. I've always been hypersensitive to noise, the noise from light bulbs that are not properly set up. The wiring is off and you can hear you know, noise, sound from them, the noise you can hear in the background from the air conditioning because, you know, my family is a little hard of hearing and I guess they don't notice it and it drives me out of my mind. You know, they need to come in and fix that, but it's not a problem for them. So why would they fix it? They don't hear it. (laughs) It's crazy, but it, it can be very harmful. Loud enough noises, people living near airports, they can have a heart attack. You know, it, it can be a weapon, a very serious weapon. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I, I've begun to notice it increasingly and I think our next move will be our final move and it's going to be somewhere a lot quieter. Now, just as um, I was coming on air today, Robin has been on air herself. Again, check out freedomslips.com, Revolution Radio, Dr. Robin Falkoff. If that's all you put into a search engine, you'll find Robin very quickly, freedomslips.com. Very, very, very good show. Have a listen to it, particularly if you have the, you know, kind of opinions I have. It's always good to listen to people who think uh, a little bit differently than you do. Now, Donald Trump has promised to keep families together over this um, fury, this this express expressing of outrage that there would be separations or there has been separations of families. Uh, families have been separated, undocumented child migrants have been separated from adults. I'll be signing something today that's going to end that, he told reporters at the White House. These things are never rationally talked out in the mainstream media, Robin. Of course they're not. Everything is sensationalised. What? How do you see this issue with uh, Texas, with undocumented migrants coming in, with these cages these photographs of children, it's all very emotive. No better woman than you to cut through all of that spin and give us the truth. What's going on? Ah, most definitely. I will cut right through it because you know what's so despicable, Richie? The pictures that they're using showing children in cages are from when Obama was in office. Is they that right? know it, they keep using it, they keep lying about it, and it is disgusting because that was when he was in office and then... A lot of people are saying because all the information about trafficking, and I know you know well about trafficking in the UK, that those kids were turned over to traffickers. You know, that, gee, this was a great bonus for people to come to the United States and bring some kid with you that you can, you know, trade in like your pass so that you get here. So what we're seeing are lies. Uh, What they're not showing, which you can find online, are the camps that are being set up with these big, Buildings, they look like modern buildings. You can see that they've got to be air conditioned inside. You've seen areas that they photographed where there are video games and all kinds of video games. Yeah, video games. You know, they've got their, their controllers and they're all gathered around. And all this drama and exaggeration, they have staged photos and not even admitted that those photos were staged. There's one photo of a little child standing and looking up at somebody. It was a staged photo. Now, this stuff infuriates me, just like a lot of what happened with no acknowledgement from the left about what was achieved by our President Trump with Korea. They've done nothing for years, and then they have nothing good to say other than attacks, more attacks. And to me, what I see out of all of this And what I was asking, I had Ole Damagard on and uh, Cody Snodgrass on Monday. And I said, guys, you know, to me, this looks like a massive psyops that they unleashed two years ago just to show us like, eh, you see, we can do it. And through whatever means that they use, they reached those vulnerable, weak-minded people and got them to be compromised. I mean, when did you ever think of some kid in college that hears the name of President Trump and he's traumatized. He's got to go run and hide under a table with crayons. This is an aberration. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. I'm going to endorse what you said about the photographs. This is rubbish. I spent years in a commercial radio station newsroom and one of the things we were most terrified of, we were terrified of getting caught out like that. In fact, we had meetings 
about information and about our sources all the time because the feeling was, Robin, is that if we ever made a mistake and put information out there and stood over it and it was then proven to be nonsense, we felt, this is really interesting, that our reputations could never be recovered. Never. Even if it was accidental. It, it was a case of, no, you'll never get over that. You'll never be trusted again. And here we have proof that they are using photographs that have not been taken recently, that have been taken several years ago. It is disgraceful, yeah. isn't it? It's disgraceful. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, you know, you're aware of all of that. And as you said, you know, when somebody slings the mud, it's out there. And that is the modus operandi with these people. I mean, the Saul Alinsky methods of accusing uh, the other side, you know, left, lefty, liberals, Democrats, whatever you want to say, uh, are you Republicans or blue, red? I, I don't know. You know, the divisions have been, have they've tried to really sensationalized and terrify and have people living in fear about them when they're ridiculous yeah. one on one but what they do they make all these comments like you're nazis you're fascists and they are the ones out there with bicycle chains beating the trump supporters setting fire to different things that trump supporters were were selling at different rallies i mean it is so staggering to see the disconnect and they're out there saying that we're the Nazis and we're racist and it's it's just that slinging of mud however they can and just to keep the bad in the minds of the people that don't even bother to look further. Yeah, because we're in a post-fact um, world now. Facts don't matter anymore. This is how it's been engineered and there are people on both sides of, if you want to say right-left or alt-right or far-left, equally responsible for th this paradigm we exist in where it doesn't the, the truth doesn't matter it's just who shouts the loudest and who says the most um i don't know the most palpably insane thing I, i'm definitely going to go uh, along um with that dr robin falkoff is live on the line uh, to us today from florida check out freedomslips.com check out revolution radio um great show and uh, robin's always got terrific guests uh, on it he, um, I mean, what are people going to do, Robin? I mean, with with this situation where people are kind of, you know, you've got people on the right, they're, I, I say quite rightly, worried about the effects of undocumented migrants, how it affects, um, how it affects them, how it, how it, you know, how it affects US citizens in terms of getting a job and in terms of driving down wages and all of that. And then on the other hand, you know, you have people on the left and many of them, not all of them, but I suppose many of them mean well. They say, you know, you've got to do the best you can to help those less fortunate than us, people coming from Mexico, destroyed by drug wars, massive problems. They say we always need an undocumented, not an undocumented, but we always need a kind of an unskilled workforce in the States to come in, to work in the vineyards, to work in the farms. Where do you find a happy medium there? Yeah, we don't need the undocumented workforce. First of all, it creates all kinds of problems. And where do we find the happy medium? Look at other countries and look at the rules and regulations about immigrating or emigrating into another country. They're strict. The United States is the most lax, and Trump is the first one to try to do something about it, and I support that. You know, years ago, I don't know, Three generations ago in my family, they came from Austria to the United States. And, you know, you go through Ellis Island. That, that's how it, how it worked then. People came legally. They weren't sneaking in. And there's no reason for that not to happen. I mean, to be threatened by a march of people, they don't stop in the countries that they were going through from uh, Central America. Uh, they didn't stop in Mexico. No, they wanted to all come and descend upon the United States and storm the border. And I just can't see anything other than criminal actions. And they did find guns and weapons and that a lot of the people, you know, weren't these poor, helpless immigrants, which is an interesting point, Richie. Do you remember? I don't know if we spoke about it with the first migrant swarm that hit the EU. And I kept saying to people and saying on air, I don't get it. 
you know, these guys all have cell phones. They're all really muscular and great shape, you know, you can see. And they're claiming all this suffering. How do you manage a, a cell phone on the run? It's interesting that, yeah, when when we saw photographs of migrants arriving from, you know, people allegedly fleeing from Syria and from Iraq and places where ISIS were, you know, obviously waging a campaign of terror. Yeah, I had to acknowledge that there did seem to be a lot of young, able, fit men and not so much of the children that we were spoken about. So I am going to give you that, but I am also going to say that because of the actions of the UK, the US, France and Israel, most notably in Saudi Arabia, in funding and arming terrorist groups like ISIS, they have, yes, they have they, undoubtedly, they have forced millions of people out and a lot, you know, you're, you're talking maybe millions of um, young families have been forced out of their countries and have fled into southern Europe, Italy, Greece, because they've basically got nowhere else to go. But I'm absolutely agreeing with you. In amongst that uh, flow of people, um, you've got some very bad people with the intentions, possibly, of doing some very bad things. That's hugely... Uh, problematic. I totally agree with that. It's um, well, and, yeah. Go ahead. And I was going to say, and and we saw at the time. Oh, geez, I think I lost it. Um, go ahead, go ahead. It'll come back to me. <laughs> Sorry. Do you know what I was thinking while you're thinking of that as well? Oh, I remember. It. Right, okay. go ahead because I'm, I'm, I want to talk a little bit about Hillary, the devil incarnate. Okay. We'll talk about Hillary in a minute, and I've got some holy water here. I always put some holy water on my forehead when I talk about Hillary. Um, I'll keep my cross. Okay. Keep your crucifix handy. There's never been a more evil human being on planet Earth, in, at least not in my time. And I can say that with no fear of contradiction. What were you going to say anyway? Go ahead. Okay, what I was going to say is I paid attention. And I, for years, have been out in the street talking to people in my areas. The best was when I had my, my girl, my dog with me. She was the best icebreaker and people relaxed. Everybody loved her. And we had a conversation in the post office right when Obama announced that he was going to do surgical strikes and bomb Syria. And it was like, what? They've just been bombed. That's what everybody's horrified about. And you're going to bomb them again? Shortly after that was when the United States made an announcement and it seems the majority of people on the left side don't have any memory and i mean really <laughs> yeah. it's scary and that was when they announced oh we didn't realize that the supplies got hijacked they went to the wrong group that the united states had provided the weaponry yeah and of course that wasn't um, a mistake that was deliberate yeah. of course of course not of course not you know i'm i'm, I'm not a one position person no i know I you're not listen look th this is why i love listening to you you're 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 level headed and I know that you've got to have problems with Trump's attitude to Syria. You know, you can't be calling him, and you can't be saying Assad is an animal and he's gassing his own people because Trump knows this is not true. He knows no, this. We knew it. Yeah, we knew it from the beginning. The reports yeah. came out that Assad wasn't. But there's another story that you might not have heard, which I've heard. And the strikes in Syria, with their phrase that they like to use, were surgically done and they were new world order areas where there was money being made. And they took out those areas in Syria. So whatever, for whatever it's worth, I heard that from several different sources and it made sense and they were surprisingly accurate <laughs> with what they did, but uh, there weren't the other areas. Well, I tell you why. Well, I'll tell you why I don't believe that, and you won't be surprised that I don't believe it. It's not because I don't want to believe it. I, I, I don't. You, you know, I'm neither um, left nor right. I'm not liberal. I'm not conservative. I don't subscribe yeah. to any of these ideologies. I don't believe that because Trump is as influenced or as controlled by Zionist interest groups as his predecessor was. In fact, you might even argue, with the presence of Jared Kushner and with Trump's attitude towards Israel, that maybe he, no president maybe in recent time, has been under the thumb of Tel Aviv and uh, the Zionists more than he has. What do you say to that? Oh, no, I, <laughs> I'm not a political person either. I'm an issues yeah. person. 
And I don't agree with that. I understand what they're saying, but I think everything's been massaged, overly massaged, all about Israel and what they have to do. And, you know, there are very serious issues and everybody claims propaganda on both sides. So I don't think he's as controlled as people think he might be. Uh, the man is full of surprises and the man is very, very highly intelligent. He's been doing so much research into all these different areas for years, you know, paying to get the information presented to him so he could be on top of things. So he's no dummy. He might act like a dummy. And then there's all these stuff about, you know, the different codes that are being used, which I can't follow or identify. I can yeah, see when they yeah. print them out. But, you know, it makes sense. I mean, why would this time of history for humans be any different than the others when they all talked in codes? So, uh, you know, but the influence of Israel, I just take issue with making it illegal to boycott Israel. I, you know, that stuff drives me nuts. Yeah, fair enough, Robin. I, I told you, I'm going to take a very quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the omen that is Hillary Clinton. Because when, whatever anybody thinks of Donald Trump, and people are entitled to their opinion, you, you've got to take with a large degree of salt news broadcasts featuring Hillary Clinton talking about protecting children. Oh, God. Right, so we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about um, the hypocrisy of Clinton. But I also want to ask you, and I want you to be told, I, I know you will be totally honest. I, I, later on, I want to ask you, are there things that Donald Trump promised when he was campaigner uh, Trump, before he became President Trump, are there things that he said he would do that he hasn't done that have frustrated you? So we'll talk about those things. And then we will talk about cannabis as well if we have time with them, okay. Dr. Robin Falkoff. Great to have you on, Robin. Stay there. We'll be back in exactly 90 seconds' time. Healthfreedomrights.com is Robin's website. Check it out. Very important information on there. Have you lost access to important data from a computer hard drive, mobile phone, or other storage device? Maybe you have a broken hard drive containing years of information, or a smartphone that no longer works from which you'd like the pictures, movies, and chats recovered. If you would like to recover data from any type of digital device, including desktop and laptop computers, external hard drives, cameras, smartphones, NAS, and RAID servers, then contact Data Clinic today at dataclinic.co.uk now. There's a place high in the mountains of Spain, a sanctuary where souls gather from all around the globe to learn about themselves and experience powerful changes in the way we see our world. They become awakened to their gifts and their power to heal others. Become part of this ever-growing worldwide family of unique, pure energy healing practitioners. Discover how amazing you truly are. Go to www dot markbayerski.com It could just change your life forever. Forever. Introducing the H2O app, a powerful water structure and application that programs vibrational energies into water through the use of different sound frequencies. Once programmed, the use of water for drinking, cooking, bathing. Give it to your friends and colleagues or spread it around the garden. The list goes on. It's not just water that the app can be used for either. It's great for programming crystals too. The H2O app is free to download and is available on both Android and Apple platforms. For further information, go to h2oapp.online. Welcome back to the program. It's half past the hour. We've got Robin for another 15, uh, 20 minutes. Check out healthfreedomrights.com. But you can hear Robin every day. That's at 3 p.m. UK time. If you're in the UK listening to this, 3 p.m. UK time. It's uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Freedomslips.com. Revolution Radio with Dr. Robin Falkoff. You know... Okay. Can I jump in one second, Richie? Sure. I have two shows. Today at 6 o'clock Eastern, I have my second show that's only on Wednesday night. So I do six shows a week. It's what they don't want you to know. Brilliant. The morning show is Event Horizons. And today, I'm going to replay an interview, which is something that's absolutely shocking. I can send it to you to listen. You'll probably want to get this aviation attorney on about how they have undermined the process for hiring competent people as air traffic controllers. And you will think that the man must be a raving lunatic, wow. except he's not. 
So I just want you, this is something big. If you want me to send it to oh, you, yeah. I'll be Oh, do, yeah. of course I do. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, valued source, Robin. Thanks for that. Um, and uh, and fantastic news about the second show. I wasn't aware. Uh, Event Horizon. In fact, I was listening to Event Horizons yesterday. And I was oh. listening to it with um, Phil Restino, who's a great friend of mine, who's in Florida. I sent him the link to... Uh, uh, to the show, um, new listener, really, really good guy, Phil, in Florida as well. If he's anywhere near you guys, um, you should um, have a cup of coffee with him. Really interesting man. But I want to talk about um, how, how, how is it possible to sit still if you're in a press briefing with Hillary Clinton and you're a journalist and you've been around a few years and Hillary is talking about children and it's a disgrace and you've got to look after children and children, children, children. And I'm thinking of the Reverend Lovejoy's wife on The Simpsons. Won't somebody please think of the children? And you know in that briefing room, you know that the woman standing up at the, at the, at the lectern is responsible for child trafficking, organ trafficking, money laundering, gun running. I mean, I could be here all night, right, Robin, talking about the crimes of yeah. Hillary Clinton. Sure. Imagine, imagine the madness of the world we live in. That sort of cabal, career criminal, talking about uh, children. And, you know, we could talk about Pizzagate and, you know, uh, child abuse and the links. Not maybe, we, we can't say that Hillary Clinton was involved in abusing children. We can't say that because we don't know that. But we know that a lot of people connected intimately to Hillary Clinton and to her, her husband are convicted child abusers. Over to you. The information is there. The reason Anthony Weiner's laptop got attention was because the New York Police Department, when they found it, they were so horrified, they said they're not going to let it go. Somebody doesn't do anything about it, that they would because of all of his despicable actions with underage girls yeah. and because of seeing all of the classified information and information about I guess the, the dealings with 20% of United States uranium uranium uh, being sold to Russia. I, I mean, the stuff is just, it's like crazy. You know, it, it's like the way history is being changed. They're rewriting it as we speak. They're tearing down statues because, oh, it makes me unhappy. I don't yeah. think it's nice. You know, I, I can't, this weakness is terrifying because that's what they want. We complacent people. And that's, if Hillary had been elected, oh my God, we would have been going through the same issues as Germany, as you are in the UK as well. And I, I can't see where it would have been different. And I felt from the beginning that Donald Trump was the last hope to buy us some time. And maybe with that time, we could get something done. But how do you deal with someone like her? And you think maybe it's because of, you know, her marriage and all the problems with his relationships. But then you go back and see, you know, that she was taken off a case for criminal or actions, you know, that that were uh, that were breaking the law. I forgot the right legal termination for You're what she absolutely, did. You are absolutely, you are 100% right. As an attorney, it is proven, it has been proven conclusively that she knowingly put a witness on the stand knowing that the questions she put to him would be answered dishonestly. Now that's um, something I know a little bit about having sat in courtrooms um, for years and I know it's, I know that the legal systems in the UK and Ireland are different to the US but there is one fundamental principle. A, an advocate for uh, uh, cannot yeah. put somebody on the stand knowing they're going to lie and she you know, she got a known child abuser, somebody she knew to be a child abuser, um, yeah. off. Uh, but here's the $64 million question, you see. And this is why I've had people say to me that they think that Trump is pretty much, you know, when it all boils down to it, they think that Trump is pretty much an okay guy. And that when it came down to it, a lot of what he said in the campaign, in the run-up to the election, he actually meant it. Whether he could do it or not, he meant it. But you, we're talking about Clinton here and the crimes, these are horrendous. I mean, this is 
Nazi stuff. This is beyond anything, beyond the scope of most people's imagination. So the $64 million question is, and I'm not saying this to wind you up or to annoy you or to bash you or your opinions. I'm not. But why I'm not why hasn't why hasn't Trump gone after this woman then? Okay. Um there are a lot of layers to the onion, or like my friend W says, the law is different at every level, and it certainly is. And you want to get a case that will stick. You don't want to go through all of this and then find that she wiggles her way out of it. So it's look at what we're encountering right now. And by the way, there was just a headline that Trump signed the executive order for the people at the border, even right. though they are expecting that there'll be legislation against him because he signed it. <laughs> I mean, it's so insane. But with Hillary, uh, you've got to get an airtight case and that's really hard. And, you know, you see all these memes going around that, well, they take me down, I'll take down half the government. Yeah, that's what we want to take them all down. So, uh, he would like to accomplish a lot of things. I think the depth and breadth of what is under the sewers with these, these swamp dwellers in the senior executive services and, and, you know, these hidden groups. It's so far reaching. It's so well established that trying to dig through that has taken all this time and there's still a lot more to go. So when you're undermined every step of the way and your conversations inside the White House, per private phone calls are leaked to the press and they spin it into lies, you know, it just takes a really strong person to deal with it. And with the actions that Hillary has taken, uh, you know, we're all impatient. Everybody's waiting. You know, it's like, when are we going to see the rule of law enforcement? We're going crazy. You know, we can't wait any longer. But if it's not done right, and, you know, then we can't try her again for the same crimes. You know, so, I, I, I'm going to burst your bubble without meaning to. Let's, let's just okay. say, let's say that I agree with you about Trump's virtues. So, right, I do. I agree. The guy meant most of what he said on the campaign trail. The fact is, the country is owned by the Rothschild Zionist controlled financial institutions of the world. And the what new. And, uh, so is the UK. Of course it is. It's, it's yes, the city it's, of it's, London. Absolutely. It's worse here. And. No, no, no. But we're also owned by the city of London. That never yes, went away. Never went away. And it doesn't matter who gets in. Because whether Bill Hicks, rest in peace, whether he was right and that they show these guys the Sapruder film or whether it's less subtle even than that, no man or woman, however virtuous, can do anything in that cesspool. The whole system has to come down. And people, yes. in, my, in my mind, people have to get out of left-right paradigm. We can vote our way out of this crap uh, every four years because you can't. You can't. Trump can't do anything about it. Obama, well, Obama was something completely different. Can't do anything about what's going on. And I'll, that's the conclusion I've drawn. And I'd love to be wrong. I'd love, over here, the, you know, the lefties have thrown in behind Jeremy Corbyn. And it doesn't matter how many times Corbyn contradicts something that they believed, you know, some virtue that they believed he had. Doesn't matter, they still cling on to it. Oh, he'll come good for us. No, he won't. The financial institutions, you said at the City of London, right? Um, the Rothschilds, th th these people are in control. And that's the way it is. And you and me, well, you know, we're, we're, we're like flies in the ointment, if, uh, if that. As well as you do with your show and Richard and your website, it's absolutely brilliant. That's Richard, how Richard is not on the same page as me. So he's a whole different entity. So of course he is. Of course, but, but in terms of raising people's awareness about the universe and the nature of reality, sure, sure. you know, absolutely fantastic. Dr. Robin Falkoff is our guest. Check out healthfreedomrights.com. Terrific lady, great broadcaster and uh, terrific. Um, no, nobody, I've not met too many people with an understanding of, of our health physically, emotionally, as, as Robin does. So this week in this country, um, the Home Secretary, which is the man responsible for basically domestic policing and keeping people safe in the UK and all of that, um, oh and that the law. Now? That's a, Sajid Javid is his name. He oh. licensed um, medicinal cannabis for two families this week of young children who've got severe epilepsy, terrible um, types of epilepsy that, you know, multiple seizures a day. 
the oil has proven to be hugely successful in treating them and they're going to look into you know making the oil more widely available that can't be a bad thing or should we be suspicious of the motivations of government what do you think robin no it, it's a good thing richie and it's highly effective but but and there's a big but the story got coverage by sanjay gupta on cnn gag me when i say that uh and about cannabis and about the brothers in Colorado and their strain of Charlotte's Web, all, all CBD, no THC. The most effective cannabis has a ratio for seizures. It should be a higher amount of CBD, but you need the THC present for the therapeutic benefits. And they have villainized CBD. And there was just it's a good thing that he's approved that and it works incredibly well, but it in works even better with full extract cannabis oil that has both components along with the myriad other, uh, you know, 430 something things that make up the, the whole cannabis plant, active ingredients. But you need what comes together with it. And I'm looking at an article that was in um, Research and Development Magazine about the only federally authorized grow of marijuana under contract with the National Institute of Drug Abuse. Now, they supply plants, and what they are working to do, which is an abomination for any herbalist, for anybody that understands, they want to standardize. And they want to standardize means they're going to find the active ingredients and grow plants that will focus on those properties. You know, that's when you make drugs, when we've taken herbs like foxglove and made cardiac uh, medications. And they're so dangerous because it's an isolate. And the components that buffer and make it more available and easier on the body are removed. So when they talk about doing this with cannabis, we've seen the dangers with the synthetic drug Marinol. And people have freaked out. They've had co total breakdowns, um, being sick, think thinking they've lost their minds, all kinds of horrible reactions because it's not the plant. It's something that they've grown. So standardizing ties in with the agenda. And I know people involved with that, and I think they are the lowest of the low, working to make GMO plants because, oh, it will be better. You know, they'll be drought resistant. We could do it the old way that they've done all along. You find the plants that live in areas where there are droughts, and those are the ones you breed for the areas that have droughts. You know, the ones that survive in cold temperatures, the one that survive in hot temperatures. You know, that's the way you do it without changing their genetic structure and launching a whole bunch of things you don't know, which they're not only doing with plants, Richie, they're doing with CRISPR, the new genetic manipulations. They don't even bother explaining the multiple changes that have taken place. They just go ahead and, you know, from what they claim was uh, an experiment on mice, on three blind mice, then they move on to a baby in utero. And they never answered the questions about why were there 1,500 new additions to the genetic information of those mice? So what are they doing as they change the plant to focus on what they think is desirable, perhaps only CBD and nothing else? You know, what kind of plant will it then be when it's out of balance? This is terrible stuff, this, Robin, what you're describing, because everybody fears this. Everybody fears that the governments of our countries, you know, we've seen it legalised in many states and we've seen it legalised in Canada. Now they're talking about legalising medicinal cannabis here. But our big fear is, and nobody talks about this in the national press, is who are they going to turn the production of that over to? And this is terrible. You know, they're not going to say to people, well, you can grow your own plant if you like, or your own plants. I had a lady on the program last night from Cork and she was um, fantastic. She came on um, to talk about how she has MS and how she grows a plant. Obviously, it's illegal. She shouldn't be doing that, but she does. And she extracts the oil and the spasms and the cramps that the MS would give her, particularly in one of her legs, Using the oil, Robin, with a little bit of THC content um, means that those cramps and spasms don't happen. But when this gets rolled yeah. out, it'll be big pharmaceutical companies given the license, right? Uh, well, that's what has to be fought. You yeah. know, maybe they will finally agree to lose one. I mean, we let the Sackler family get away with hell with selling fentanyl and, and creating or being part of the opioid epidemic that's just taken over and destroyed so many lives in this country. 
So maybe they'll give a pass on it. They have a big enough market. They don't have to have everything to destroy cannabis. But, you know, I, I can dream, can't I? Yeah, you can. And Robin, is an ex- Robin has been talking about this for a long, long time. There's nobody better qualified than I've ever spoken to to talk about uh, these issues. And you mentioned opioids there. Bit of a scare a few weeks back. I know you covered it on Event Horizons. By the way, freedomslips.com. Robin is on again at 11 p.m. UK time this evening. And um, what they're not telling you, I think you said that was called. Is that right, Robin? Or what, what, what they don't want you to what know. What they don't want yeah. you to know. Um, Event Horizons uh, in, uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. UK time. Go to freedomslips.com. Uh, Bit of a scare about people getting opioids in their food chain, Robin, through, through shellfish and stuff like that. Because there are so many opioid prescriptions being given by general practitioners that it's it's causing all sorts of problems coming through the food chain is it really as bad as that it's it's worse than that richie but it doesn't have an effect where you're going to get an opioid high it's just this low dosing exposure low dosing exposure i i've never felt effects of chemtrails i know many who have but i do know many of the components in chemtrails and it is all low dosing exposure and when you do that, that's to make the bodies susceptible to a trigger that will come later with something totally innocuous that's commonplace, you know, that everybody will eat or drink and lo and behold, then they're going to be really deathly ill. But the, yes. uh, you know, there are so many insidious agendas, you start sounding like a raving lunatic. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> yes, and one of the things we've shared for many, many years is the realization that we can't, um, programs like this have got to reach, find a middle ground and, you know, reach people who ordinarily would think that we were basket cases. And you've got to be, you've got to tailor your content to to that accordingly. I mean, I'm always aware of that. I mean, I meet people who, they will tell me that, oh, my boyfriend or my girlfriend listens, but I think you're crazy. You know, I think the stuff you talk about is crazy. And I just, I'm always polite and say, well, you know, it can't all be crazy. There must be something in there that resonates um, with you. But you're right. Um, I, I, I worry about it. Here's a question that's come in. I know you're based on the East Coast these days, but you know, we never talk, and we're going to have to make this the final one because we're coming up on our time. Thanks for coming back. Dr. Robin Falkoff is on uh, the line. Great uh, guest. Uh, terrific to have her back on the show. Tell me this. We don't talk so much about Fukushima anymore and the fallout from it. I understand that radiated water is still pouring into the sea off the coast there. Is this a massive cover-up? This Are the effects of this being felt on the Pacific coast in terms of... Oh. Oh, God, that's a question. Of course, it started from the very beginning. Wow. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, good, I, good, sorry. good, good, good. Go this, ahead. This is this is from the beginning. And when I cite an, an example of proof, people go, oh, yeah, I remember that soccer ball that was found in Alaska. It was less than a month after Fukushima. No, but Fukushima didn't get to the West Coast. Only a soccer ball miraculously arrived there with the name of some child written on it and they went to great lengths to return it to this child but what more does it take for people to connect the dots they don't and that's what's terrifying fukushima has been here there were stillborn rates in boston because of the uh jet stream the way it goes on a northerly route uh contamination of all the seafood in the pacific you know we were on a cruise ship at the time and when i got back uh to new mexico I bought as much seafood from Chinese markets that I could because I knew I'd never buy it again from the Pacific or anything else from the Pacific. So it's a big challenge. It's affected the air we breathe. I don't even know what to say about people in Hawaii. You know, I've asked people many times on air and they go, "Uh, duh, you know, what's between the United States and Fukushima? Hawaii, you know, who's going to be the first stop that's going to get hit with this stuff? And it is very scary when you see that the EPA, which has always been totally useless as far as I'm concerned, you know, and they, they are all over Trump. Why does he want to get rid of them? They never enacted anything to protect against factory farms, fracking, chemical plants, 90% of the country having contaminated water, Flint, Michigan, uh, you name it. There's so much contamination 
that they haven't done anything about. And it just boggles the mind that these things, oh, well, yeah, they're, they're going to fix it. And you're waiting years and years for that to happen. So Fukushima is real. The problems are real. You have to choose what you eat carefully. And there's contamination all over with their plans for population reduction. And you can call me a raving nut. At least I tell my audience that I know they think I'm nuts. Um, it's, it's real. It's stuff that's really happening. And Agenda 21, you look at what their goals are, and then you look at other cities around the states here that I've seen that already have these small apartments close to the train that goes through, you know, and they are going to be closing down these little villages and making them only walking. This stuff is in motion. It is in motion. And contaminated water continues to pour into the sea and the media is absent. And people who think that somebody like you is a raving lunatic, they need only ask, why has their media totally abandoned that story in the last two or three years? You can't find an article about it. Well, you can, maybe an isolated one, but the large media companies, the big TV news programmes and the papers have just ignored it because they know, well, first of all, they're told to, because if they go looking at it again, they're going to have to tell people the truth that um, it's, it's, it's basically, it's an extinction event for, for, for sea life on the west coast of, of your country. I have no doubt in my mind. We're, um, there, go on, go was, ahead, Robin. Last word to you. Go ahead. There was one website that covered it, and now their last update was from November. <laughs> was they've, it? they've just been decimated. They gave the reports on exactly what was going on each time TEPCO made new releases. So they've been, you know, wiped out. So I don't know where we're going to get real news about that. But Richie, your pleasure, always. Brilliant to have you on, Robin. Folks, go to freedomslips.com. Event Horizons, 3 p.m. Um, that's UK time, 3 p.m. every day. Robin, the programme that starts at 11 p.m. tonight, remind us the details. What they don't want you to know, it's with aviation attorney Michael Pearson. I had heard him interviewed on the Tucker Carlson show, and I went absolutely nuts tracking him down to get him on my show. He's a wealth of information, and you, you will think, how could they be so stupid? And then your next thought is going to be, uh-oh, what are they doing in the UK about how they're hiring air traffic controllers so they can have uh, diversification, not capabilities, but just so that they have diversification of people in the jobs. No experience, but hey, you know, they'll be trained. We might lose a plane or two, but in the meantime, at least we'll have equality. That doesn't make too much sense to me, but... Robin, yeah. listen, um, thanks for coming back. We'll talk again real soon with your permission. Healthfreedomrights.com is Robin's website. You'll find all you need to know about Robin there. And there is a wealth of free information at your fingertips there concerning health and a lot more besides as well. All the best, Robin. Thanks a lot. Have a great show later today and thanks for coming back. Thank you, Richie. Always a pleasure. I appreciate your expertise and fairness. Thanks so much, Robin. Brilliant stuff. Right, that's about it for the programme today. Great to have Robin back. Healthfreedomrights.com is the website. Check her out. 